Hey everybody, thank you for checking out this video today. My name is Dan Seabearded and I would like to get some reminders out of the way real quickly here. First off, if you are new here, welcome to the channel. If you enjoy learning about beards, whether it's the styling, the science behind it, really anything at all, this is the channel for you. Please consider subscribing. Cost you absolutely nothing, but makes a big difference with what I do here. If you're a returning subscriber, I see you. I appreciate you. Genuinely, thank you. Also, if you think this video is going to be helpful or you change your mind later at any point, please hit a thumbs up to show that you like this content. So let's talk about a video topic that you likely five years ago would have never considered watching, right? Most of you were not likely thinking about this. If you were, you're a real one. You're a veteran out there. But a lot of you are just getting into this. You're probably planning. It's something newer to you in the last few years. And we're going to talk about necklines. Yes, the human hair that grows on your neck along a line. And the question would be, if I'm growing a medium to long beard, where should my neckline be, right? We've seen tons and tons of videos about short beards on the neckline. Kind of general rule of thumb real quick, if you have a shorter beard, so you want to go one or two fingers above the Adam's apple, kind of follow the natural contour of your face, you're good to go. What we see a lot of guys do is follow, follow that jawline and it looks terrible, chin strap, we don't want that. That's well documented, got it. Now let's take a look at the six inches plus beards, four or five inches plus beards, and what do you do with that neckline? The easiest and best answer, listen clearly here, is leave it alone. If you can go natural with that neckline, you will greatly thank yourself and thank this advice in six months to a year down the road when it makes all the difference in the world. The reason being is you need those hairs where your neck is growing to add layers and depth and density to that beard. If you do not, if you're just growing down from your face and that neckline keeps getting shaved, keeps getting trimmed, you're going to have a very thin beard and a transparent beard. I like to call the back there your supporting actors and that comes from your neck. Now, is it going to be the prettiest? Is it going to be the best looking for a few months? No, it's probably not. But if you can get through it, it's worth it. Whether it's staying at home for work, whether it's wearing a gaiter, all those things can kind of help out the process. Now, you do have another option. For those of you that are like, there's no way I could do that, not with my boss, not with my wife, whatever it may be, you can grow your beard longer. And as your beard starts to cover it, you can start to naturally lower that neckline. The problem with that is, at least for a little while, it's going to be thinner than, than it could possibly be because you're taking away some of those supporting actors. The one good thing with doing that is it looks clean along the journey, and then as you're growing that beard down and that neckline starts creeping down and starts catching up, is you can just do little transparency trims and now leave it above the neckline, and your neck is going to start to catch up. It's going to start to fill in, and it's going to look good. It's just going to take a lot longer if you were able to go natural. Now, I want to throw in a little bonus, a little bit extra here that I don't really hear getting talked about, but it did make a difference with me, as ridiculous as this sounds. If possible, grow out your chest hair and it's going to creep up. If you're like me, I'm just a hairy dude, right? I take 10,000 MCGs of uh, biotin a day. I have hair growing everywhere. My shoulders look like I got shoulder pads on them sometimes uh, if I don't trim that down. Well, the same with my neck here. And I'm going to show you guys at the end. I don't normally like to show it on video because it messes up my beard, but I will show it in this video. My neckline is as low as it gets, which I'm very fortunate. It's below my Adam's apple, so I have good density and coverage. But I also let my those chest hairs grow up and kind of creep up to that neckline. The reason why it adds a little bit of density and it adds a lot of color. My skin underneath my neck is pale white straight up pasty white. I'm not the tannest dude in the world, right? But I do get a little bit of tan in the summer. I know I still look at sharp, look at sharp, but it's not the tannest thing, especially my neck. All those UV rays are being blocked by my beard and beard products. There's nothing getting down there. So when I have this color beard, I don't know what you would call this, like rustic, beautiful, strawberry, blonde. I don't, you give, what would you guys call my beard color down in the comments? I'm genuinely curious. Drop that down below. Well, when you have this color with the backdrop of a pasty pale white neck, it can make transparency seem a lot more easy to achieve 
But when I get that neck hair creeping up, that adds some brown, that adds some darkness, and it gives me like a backboard to not have as much transparency. That genuinely made a massive difference. Some of you are going to hear them say, that is ridiculous. This dude grew out his chest hair up. Yes, you can't see it. Nobody's ever looking underneath my beard, so what does it matter? I see guys that have big, huge beards. They move the beard to the side. They line up their neck. They get that chest hair. Why? Nobody's ever down there but you, so stop touching it. The more hair you have underneath your beard, underneath that first layer of hair, the better it's going to look. So, if you can, grow that beard, grow that neckline out as low as possible, as natural as possible, to achieve the best medium to long beard. Alright, two seconds, we're going to wrap it up for a quick conclusion. To conclude here, I would love some of your help in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on a neckline for a medium to long beard? What has your experience been? What did you learn along the way? Any mistakes? Did you do something you learned from it and you're like, hey, let me share and maybe help somebody else down the road? I would love to read those comments and I know there's a lot of viewers that would as well. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Dancy Bearded, let that neckline go natural for the best possible beard. Stay bearded and stay positive.